Hey, I'm Luke with SNSD Some Motorsport, and today we've got a really exciting announcement for the diesel market, specifically the Ford guys. So uh, the Ford trucks are great trucks. I drive one myself. Um, they're well built, good engines. The 6.7 Power Stroke's been great. The one thing they've been missing is a really good, reliable fuel pump option. And uh, that's the one thing that's never been able to exist before, but Luckily, uh, we're happy to announce that that problem has been solved and uh, we've got the right product for the market. So in 2011, a little background on this, in 2011 is when Ford uh, developed the 6.7 Power Stroke. They developed it prior to that, they launched it for 2011 model year. That's a great engine. Uh, it's proven to be pretty reliable, lots of power. The truck itself is refined and in a great truck. There's probably more Super Duties on the road than any other medium duty truck. Um, in, in fleets and ambulances and everything like that. So it's a great, great truck. The, the one thing that you hear people talk about all the time is the CP4 fuel pump and being worried about it or actual failures of it or trying to recover from it, uh, lots of problems like that. So prior to now, the best solution for that was our disaster prevention kit. So we developed that years ago, uh, which can't prevent the CP4 from failing, but if the CP4 does fail, it uh, stops all the collateral damage. So it protects your injectors and uh, rails and all the rest of the expensive parts. It helps with limited downtime, but you still would have a pump failure. It would just uh, jump on the grenade basically of the pump and uh, help to keep the rest of the, the components safe. Today, uh, we're announcing the uh, release of a DCR high pressure fuel pump conversion. So <clears throat> that is this high pressure fuel pump and associated components. So we have teamed up with Stanadyne and uh, Pure Power Technology. So Pure Power Technologies is a Stanadyne company. Um, it's kind of their aftermarket leg. And um, we have worked with their engineering teams uh, jointly to develop the solution that this market has been dying for. So we've done CP3 conversions previously for the LML Duramax platforms. That's the best thing for those for reliability as well as performance. Same for the 2019 and 20 Cummins that's got the CP4. Um, we have done CP3 conversions for that even prior to Cummins recalling those. Um, we had the solution on the market. This one uh, never had a solution and that's for space claim problems. The block on this one, and we'll show you on this engine in a second, was designed around a CP4 from the get-go, so there was never that much room to fit a bigger pump. Well, we've worked uh, with Standardine and Pure Power guys um, to apply this base pump. So this high-pressure pump is fairly compact. It's a two-cylinder uh, opposed uh, pump. This base is a Standardine um, pump that is in production. Other parts of the world, there's hundreds of thousands of them in production in other markets on um, heavy duty Cummins engines. And it's a reliable, robust, good design as far as the bottom end guts of the pump. So um, we have worked with them to develop how to apply this into the Ford application. That takes a lot of special bits and pieces. The cam's different, the IMV, the metering unit is different, different supply pump configuration, lots of different parts, but the core of the pump is still the same proven part. So that's the important part, similar to how we've done on other applications. So exciting news for the Ford guys uh, that they've been waiting for for a long time. <clears throat> so the LML, for example, Duramax was originally Dur the LB7, right? Um, 2001, they launched the LB7 first for the common rail had a CP3. Uh, that's a larger pump than the CP4. This is a Ford CP4. It's a pretty compact pump. It's lightweight, it's modular. Um, it's much easier to make than a CP3. It actually has quite a few advantages from a manufacturing and vehicle side. It's lower cost um, to manufacture. It's good in some of those ways. It gives up the reliability, robustness, and uh, and contamination of the system if it fails though. That's, that's the downsides and that's why there's been recalls, that's why there's class action lawsuits, that's why there's a lot of hype about these trucks with CP4s. 
As you can see though, that's a pretty compact pump. So the LML originally was LB7 to LLY to LBZ to LMM to LML. Well, originally it had a CP3, so it still had space claim for that. Same with the 2019 and 2020 Cummins in the Ram pickups that's got a CP4. It uh, originally had a CP3, there's room, plus it's an inline six, there's a lot more room versus a V8, so it had that. This 6.7 Power Stroke was always designed around this. So when they designed the block, all they had to do was clear this. Well, bigger pumps won't fit in there because they never had them to begin with. But fortunately, we've been able to package this <clears throat> into um, this application. It uses the factory gear, uh, uses um, as many factory components as we can. The new stuff is two new high pressure lines, new low pressure line assembly, quick connects to the factory filter. Um, it's all very OE high quality. Like you can't even tell the difference when it's in the truck. Um, so straight drop in, no tuning, no calibration reflash. Um, <clears throat> this thing has been in, intentionally, very intentionally designed and perfected to be a drop in replacement. Emissions compliant um, and uh, and very OE like. So it's the perfect solution that this market has been begging for. Just it was previously thought to be not possible. <clears throat> so we'll show a little more up close of what some of this looks like. Sits right here in the valley. Basically there's a lower intake that feeds the compressor inlet of the turbo and an upper intake that uh, distributes it. It's a plenum to the actual intake manifolds and the, the valve cover. Uh, we'll show a little more close-up of that, um, but it just nestles in here nicely in the valley. Basically, you get the two intakes off, you can get right to the pump, and then uh, the vacuum cover, the vacuum pump has to come off the front to get at the gear, and then once that's off, you can get the pump out and back in again. Install of this is really no different than just putting a CP, another replacement CP4 or a fuel pump replacement in it. Uh, it's just this kit has been developed to go right in its place with the right adapters and the right replacement components. One nice thing about this also, <clears throat> so depending on the model year of the truck, 2011 to 14 is kind of one generation, 15 to 16 is kind of another, 17 to 19 is kind of another. A lot of them have different sensors, fuel supply pressure and temperature sensors in these lines coming into the pump. We have, with some of the other products that we've developed we, in, in feedback from the market, it's helpful for both us and dealers and customers to have one kit that works for a wide range of vehicles. So if you're a shop, for example, you only have to stock one product and it doesn't matter if a guy is a 2011 uh, all the way up to a current that you can cover a huge range of them. You don't have to have part number A for this range, part number B for this range, all that kind of stuff reduces the complexity and cost of having the right product all the time. So with that being said, we have to try to figure out how to interface with all these different combinations of sensors, switches, temp sensors, all that kind of stuff. So the kit actually comes with um, two bosses brazed onto the supply line. In some configurations that works as it is. In others, we actually include adapters to get the right thread correct for the other model years or plugs for this. So moral of the story is this thing's been thought out ahead of time to be compatible for all model years. That way it makes it much easier for the install. <clears throat> Adapter plate, which bolts to the block um, and then uh, gets the bolt pattern correct for this pump. And uh, here's the high pressure lines um, that come with it. Everything's highly validated, um, gone through lots of durability testing. Um, Standardine Pure Power has a abusive uh, high pressure line test uh, equipment that really beats up these high pressure lines to high pressure pulsations and everything to make sure that everything is uh, as validated as possible. Really the beauty of it is the two teams together are specifically fuel system companies with engineering groups that really know how this stuff works. So this is probably about the highest level quality and reliability that you can get in the aftermarket 
um, that's that's really OE or better lever, level um, that, uh, that that is available as an aftermarket product. Um, we've got spe special test equipment here and a lot of good background and experience to do this kind of stuff. Uh, Pure Power and Standardine do as well, and we're really just leveraging all the resources together to, to bring the best product to market for, for the Ford guys that uh, it was previously thought to not be possible. So the guys that didn't get a lot of love for a lot of years because all the fixes and all the conversions were for the other guys, now you're finally getting it, but it's a really, really good um, solution. So this display here shows really kind of the the architecture differences between the most popular known pumps. Uh, this is a, a CP3 variant. This is a CP4. The guts of a CP4, whether it's an LML um, or a Ford or anything else, are all very similar. <clears throat> this happens to be an LML one. And then this is the housing of our DCR um, conversion. And so this is kind of just to show how they work. We'll show some kind of close-up video of these pumping elements. This is a three cylinder. It's all kind of balanced nicely. This is a V twin, um, really aggressive two lobe cam. Every revolution, these go up and down two times, uh, whereas these are a more mild eccentric cam and uh, in less motion, less metal to metal contact, and uh, just less wear and less uh, risk in general. The DCR is a pretty unique design in that it's a nice, smooth, eccentric cam. Um, and a roller that very, like, very gently, essentially, kind of rotates around and, and moves the plungers up and down to pump. Another thing very unique about the DCR design, and this is one reason that we, the, we really like the base Stanodyne pump design, is that it's actually pressure lubricated through the cam, which uh, I'm not aware of really any other high pressure fuel pumps, fuel lubricated high pressure fuel pumps that are that way. The CP3 and 4 are, are not, um, they just have fuel in the case uh, that lubricates the bushings on the bottom end. Well, this actually has pressurized fuel through the cam into the bushing surfaces uh, holes here that feed into where uh, the bearing bushing surface is at. So you actually get even more flow and more lubrication through those areas that really matter. Um, you basically, this is the same type of design that an engine crankshaft would be, where you have pressurized oil into uh, oil galleys that feed main bearings, rod bearings, and the components that really matter. So that's a, that's a unique design, and you can kind of tell that things like that add extra time and cost to the manufacturing process, but it really just makes the most robust bottom end pump possible. So um, we'll show some close up video of kind of how these work and uh, you can really get a good idea of why they're so much different. The other main difference, and this is a lot of why for so many years in the applications that have a CP4, um, it, it's bad enough that they are known to be less reliable than a CP3, for example. Um, but really where it has exponentially gotten worse and is more painful, costly, and more downtime for customers is the way that this is internally plumbed. Fuel comes into the bottom end of the pump, feeds into the cam box, and then that's where all the metal to metal contact is with the cam to roller. And then it feeds up to the metering unit or up to the FCA that is what is controlling flow into the high pressure side. So unfortunately, if it starts to fail, it starts making metal here, feeds it straight to the rest of the system. These two um, are internally designed differently with the fuel, fuel flow paths where even if you have a pump failure, which doesn't happen very often, or even if you had contamination problems where you introduced debris accidentally or you had deaf contamination where you had an employee or whoever else accidentally put deaf in the fuel or you got bad fuel at the, at the pump. These, one, rarely would make metal or rarely fail, but even if they did, it's not going to send all that stuff to your injectors. It's going to stay contained in the cam box or it's going to just go back through the return to the tank. And then at that point, it's got to go through two sets of filters before it ever gets anything that hurts again. So 
overall architecture is quite a bit different. Um, and, uh, and it's why we have the preferences as to what we use. Historically, this has been a great platform for the conversion kits that we've done for our high output stroker pumps, for any of those kind of things. Um, this is uh, really a great option for the Ford that we've just recently uh, started to work on development of and we'll likely have some other variants coming as well that use this kind of base platform. So there's several hundred thousand in a different configuration but the same base of this design out in the market in other parts of the world. Um, and so it's, a, it's got a good track record already. We're just now kind of bringing it to the US and with a lot of changes to make it for this Ford. Um, we're in, got a lot of field validation testing going now. This is a really important product. Uh, there's a lot of demand for it, but we want to make sure that it's right. And um, we gotta go a little slow to go fast sometimes. We've got a lot of these out in the field in various parts of North America, some in Canada, some down South Texas in hotshot trucks, work trucks, uh, ambulances, about every application we can think of. Lots of idle time, lots of heavy towing. Think of every scenario and every ambient condition uh, that you can think of and validating it throughout all of those, not just putting it together, putting it on one of our trucks and kicking it out the door saying, yep, it's great. So. Uh, we've actually had it uh, under wraps, kind of, it's been tough to keep the secret, but we have had for since last May or June, uh, we had did a CP4 failure video with our disaster prevention kit. And part of the reason we did that was because we had this lined up uh, to come right in afterwards. So after we intentionally failed the CP4, proved that our disaster prevention kit worked and how it worked. We actually went back in, not with another CP4, but with the very first DCR. So we've had them running for quite some time on a lot of applications. We want to get some more mileage accumulation. We've got it on a lot of different model years, um, proven fit and function and all that. We're going to do some pump teardowns after the end of some of that testing, make sure we're happy with everything and we're all good. And then uh, we'll be going gangbusters and it'll be available to the market. The best way to be notified of all of that. Um, so we're, we're announcing it at the National Farm Machinery Show, February 15th, and we'll have it on display there. That'll be public. Uh, our dealers are uh, taking pre-orders and uh, they are notified about uh, the product. Uh, we'll be releasing it in actually production soon, uh, but we get, like I say, we got to make sure it's right. And that's in everybody's best interest. Uh, and there's no real concerns at this point, but um, we want it to be the most badass aftermarket product that you could possibly think of. So when am I going to make sure it's that way? And um, so go to our website, ssdiesel.com slash DCR. We'll have a landing page there for this product. More information you can get and uh, more details with it. But more importantly, there will be an email notification sign up there. Get your email on the notification list and we will keep you updated as to uh, progress with it and then when it's released and when you can get your own. So make sure and get your uh, email on that list and we'll keep you updated. Thanks.